The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. It was nearly dark and the snow was falling heavily as Teddy Woods, just 14, rounded the corner of the barn in back of the Northern Lights Cafe and headed for the dog run. <laughs> there was only one dog in one of the runs, a beautiful white Siberian, and Teddy greeted him as an old friend. Hiya, Flash. <laughs> Hungry? <laughs> oh, I'll bet you are. The way Bat starves you is a crime. I brought you a big bone with lots of meat on it. There, see? <laughs> What? At that moment, Matt Milan, the owner of the Northern Lights, and Scar Morenci, his chief lieutenant, stepped out of the back entrance of the cafe. Matt saw the boy and hurried toward him. Young Woods, huh? What do you do with that meat? Nothing, Mr. Milan. You were going to give it to Flash. It's only a bone. I've warned you to keep away from that dog, haven't I? I wasn't going to touch him. Can you imagine, Sky? Here I got the makings of the best fighting dog in the Yukon, and this kid tries to make a pet of him. Flash isn't a fighting dog. There's nothing mean about him at all. There wouldn't be if you had your way. There's just no sense in starving him and beating him. I'll train him the way I see fit. You had your last warning to keep away from him. I'll fill you full of buckshot the next time I see you here. This time you get off with a clap in my head. Oh. Now get out of here. I won't promise any. That's the kid who works for Lige Hogan, isn't it? Yeah, sleeps in the back of the store. Lights took him in when his paw died. The Flash don't like the way you treated him. He sounds plenty mean now. Huh? I'll fix him. What are you going to do? Teach him who's boss. Hey, come on, Flash. Now where are you taking him? Into the barn, away from dogs and people. I'll tie him up in there. Well, that's a good idea. And maybe you'll have time to listen to me. It's true. Ruth Caldwell's here, and he's coming over to the cafe as soon as he's had supper. That means trouble, and you know it. An hour later, Teddy Woods returned to the rear of the Northern Lights. He saw the vacant run, but at the same time, he heard Flash howling inside the barn. He went straight to the door. There was no lock on it, and he entered the building. Hello, Flash. I cut all the meat off the bone. Here it is, boy. <laughs> go ahead and eat it. He may own you, but he has no right to make you go hungry. I don't care what he says. I didn't promise anything, and I'm going to bring you something to eat every day, boy. But, but it can't be a bone, you understand, because even if you bury it in the snow, he might find it. And he'd know I was the one who gave it to you, boy. I'm not afraid of... Flash, that's bad now, outside. He's coming here. I've got to hide, boy. The loft, Flash. The boy hurried up the ladder to the hayloft. He was out of sight when Bat Milan entered the barn, followed by Scar and Ruth Caldwell. Bat hung the lantern he was carrying on a nail. Hey, there's the dog I was telling you about, Roof. It's cool in here. What do you think about the dog? Uh, he's all right. I don't know anything about these husky breeds. Let's get back to your office. Why? It's cold here. You got something on your mind, Roof. Yeah, Bat. I got plenty on my mind. Well, this is as good a place to talk as anywhere. We won't be interrupted. I want to talk to you alone. I got no secrets from Scar. Go ahead. No secrets about Frisco? None at all. All right, Bat. And maybe he knows I went to jail for you. We were in on that bank job together, Ruth. But I took all the blame because you promised you'd make it up to me when I got out. Well, I intend to do that. The job netted $2,000. You get it all. Cost me nearly 1000 to come up here. <laughs> Travel's expensive, huh? Now, listen, Bat. You started the Northern Lights with our money. You get that? Our money. 
That means half of it belongs to me. I don't figure that Well, way. I do. Now, from now on, I get 50% of the profits. Or... Or what? You still want Scar to hear this? Go ahead. You come across, Bat. Or I'll tell the San Francisco police who killed Matt Barton. 2,000 isn't enough, huh? Nah, why should it be? By rights, I got a half interest in a cafe. Maybe you'd like the whole thing. I said 50-50. But you might change your mind about that. You might come to me some fine day and say, uh, now I want 75%, Bat. 50-50. 75% or I'll tell the police who killed Matt Barton. Nah, you're wrong, Bat. Roof, uh, you're the only one who knows about Matt. That's right. I can't help thinking I'd sleep better nights if you couldn't tell what you knew. Well, bad, I won't. I said you... couldn't. Hey, bad. Put on the gun. Bad, I'm your old friend, your pal. Don't shoot. Oh, shut up, you mutt. Hey, Scar, take a look outside. See if anybody's coming. Sure. Get rid of him. Yeah, but he's registered at the palace. If he don't show up, they'll be asking questions. You'll take him up to your cabin on Lodestone Creek. Yeah? I will. That's what I said. Anyway, you'll start for Lodestone. And then what? You'll be back here in a few hours. Now, uh, your story is that a couple of trail robbers held you up, took your poke, and shot roof. Oh, I get it. Shall I use your team? No, uh, get your own. Come back here and pick up a body. Okay. You'll stay here until I get back? I will not. I'm going back to the cafe. Oh, uh, bad. Yeah? This is a big favor. You too? Oh, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I do what you ask. I'm an accessory. I'm in it as much as you are. But that's all right, only... The, uh, 2,000 I was going to pay roof? That suits me. <laughs> All right, let's go. Here's a lantern. <laughs> as soon as the men left the barn, Teddy climbed down the ladder. Flash, he's dead. <laughs> Bat must have killed a man in San Francisco. This man knew about it, so Bat shot him, just like that. If Bat knew I was up in the loft, he'd... Flash, I'm scared. I don't want to stay around here anymore. Oh, I wish you and I could go so far away that... Why not? I know of a place. A trapper's cabin that used to belong to Louis Rammel before he went prospecting. Traps there, too. We could trap for a living. And I have a sled and a team. I could get some supplies from Mr. Hogan's store. He owes me wages. I have a key to the store. We could start tonight. We could start tonight, Flash, and no one would ever find us. Bat would never be able to beat you again, and he couldn't hurt me. We'll do it, Flash. We'll run away tonight. <laughs> we have to hurry. Scar will be coming back. Come on, boy. Quiet now. Quiet, Flash. Sergeant Preston was driving down the main street of Dawson. King, who was working as a loose lead, breaking the trail through the heavy snow, suddenly swerved aside as they neared the Northern Lights Cafe. What's the matter, King? King barked an invitation for the sergeant to follow him around and back of the building. Well, if you want me to follow you, I'd better light the hurricane lantern so I can see where I'm going. It was the scent of death that made King so insistent. He led his master straight to the door of the barn. Inside, King? The sergeant opened the door and held the lantern high. One glance was enough to tell him the man on the floor was dead. Bullet straight to the heart. <laughs> Guard him, King. I'm getting back to Milan. A few minutes later, he returned with the owner of the cafe. You know him, Bath? Well, yes, I do. His name is Ruth Caldwell. He just arrived in Dawson. Well, I was talking to him not more than 15 minutes ago. 
I used to know him in San Francisco, Sergeant. You were talking to him here? No, no, in the cafe. How's he happen to be out here? Why, uh, Roof was a great dog fancier. Huh? And I suggested he step out in the back and take a look at my huskies. Hey, where's Flash? Flash? My white Siberian. He was chained up in here. He's gone. He was stolen. Hey, that's it. Roof came out here and caught someone stealing my dog. Whoever it was shot him, made his getaway. Now, that's all you have to do, Sergeant. Find my dog and you'll find the murderer. Perhaps. I wonder if there are any tracks you can follow. Oh, it's snowing too hard. Well, Flash shouldn't be hard to find. Pure white and almost as big as your king. People always notice him. How did it happen you sent Caldwell out here by himself? Why didn't you come along? Well, surely you don't suspect me. A murder's been committed, and it's my job to get all the information I can. Why didn't you come along? Well, I, I was busy in my office. <laughs> what is it, King? <laughs> King was standing at the foot of the ladder and looking up toward the loft. A blue woolen scarf was hanging down from the open trap. It was Teddy's scarf. It had caught on a nail as he was climbing down the ladder. In the boy's excitement, he had never missed it. The sergeant climbed the ladder and released the scarf. The light from his lantern caught a puddle of melted snow on the floor of the loft. Your roof leak? Uh, no, sergeant. Probably snow from someone's parka. Yes, there's a footprint. Someone was up there? Looks that way. Someone was hiding up there when Roof came into the barn. Roof saw him and It then... doesn't help much to guess. But that blue scarf belongs to the killer. Now you have two clues, Sergeant. The scarf and my dog. All you have to do the is... The first thing I have to do is find out all I can about the dead man. The name is Caldwell, you say? Roof Caldwell, from San Francisco. How well did you know him? Well, he was only a casual acquaintance, but... You know how it is when you meet someone from your hometown up here... You feel you have a lot... That replied to all the sergeant's questions with glib lies. And the sergeant was able to learn nothing of value. From the barn, he went to the cafe and questioned the employees and customers. Roof had entered the cafe and gone straight to Bat's office. That was the last anyone had seen him. At the end of the examination, the blue scarf and the missing dog were the only clues. The sergeant proceeded to headquarters and alerted all the members of the force. A search was made of the town but no one had seen the white Siberian. It was understandable. The storm had grown even worse. No one stepped outside who could help it. And so the night passed. But the following morning, Lige Hogan appeared at headquarters. The sergeant knew the storekeeper well. Morning, Lige. Uh, good morning, Sergeant. You seem worried about something. Yes, I am. Well, out with it. You know Teddy Woods? The boy who works for you? Yes, uh, his father was a friend of mine. When he died, I gave the boy a job and... Well, Teddy's been sleeping in the back of the store, so he could be there early in the morning to light the stove. And he, uh, he... Go on. Uh, well, he wasn't there this morning. I don't know where he is, except that... Well, naturally, I've heard about what happened to Northern Lights last night. There may be a connection. A connection between Teddy Woods and a murder? It's unbelievable. He's a good boy. Yes, I think so, too. Uh, there must be some other explanation. Let me have the facts, Lige, all of them. Well, Teddy's gone. His sled and his dog team are gone. Some supplies are gone. Huh? Oh, he didn't steal them. The wages I owe him were more than cover him, but... Uh, well, uh... Is that all? The blue scarf, Sergeant. They say you found a blue scarf in the barn last night. Yes? May I see it? That's right here. Do you recognize it? Yes. It's Teddy's. Oh, he was fond of Flash. He didn't like the way Bat treated him. I can see that he might be tempted to... Just... Uh, but the other... Did Teddy have a gun? One that belonged to his father? It can't be. Lies, there's only one thing to do, and that's find the boy. The town's assuming much more than I am. Teddy may have been in the barn, he may have taken Flash, but that doesn't mean he killed Ruth Caldwell. Uh, he's only 14... He were frightened. It takes more than a sudden panic to make anyone commit murder. I don't mind telling you confidentially that I'm not at all satisfied with Bat's testimony. According to the other people at the Northern Lights, he was the last one to see Caldwell alive. Of course, I have no actual evidence against him. I have no actual evidence against Teddy either, but we must find him. In spite of its growing population, Dawson was still a small town in many ways. And it wasn't long before the news spread from mouth to mouth. The blue scarf belonged to Teddy Woods, and Teddy had disappeared. It was Scar who told Bat. So this makes everything all right. How does it? Everybody thinks the kid did it. 
What happens when they put him on the witness stand? Well, you... Don't you see? He must have been up on the loft when they shot Roof. It could have been. It must have been. A melted snow up there. A footprint that was still wet. The sergeant found the body ten minutes after we left the barn. Think of that time element. And why would the boy be up in the loft if he only came to take the dog? He was hiding. From whom? Why, from us. Yeah. And the Mounties are looking for him already. We've got to find him first. It's easier said than done. It's got to be done. But Teddy wasn't found during the following week, in spite of all the men the Northwest Mounted alerted for the search. And the first clue didn't come to them, but to Bat Malone. <laughs> Mac Grady drove up to the cabin, Scar and Bat shared in the dead of night. Ho, ho, hold on. Hi. Who is it? Mac, come on in. Did you find him? No. Uh, I told you. I that... didn't find the boy, but I saw the dog. I was driving through the Black Forest, and he cut across the trail. He stopped for a minute and looked at me. I'm sure it was Flash. Why didn't you follow him? Yeah, I tried to, but I lost him. I looked for a long time, then I decided the best thing to do was to come back here. The forest is big, but if the dog's there, so is the boy. Give me a few more men, we'll make a real search. Cover every foot of ground. Yeah, there's no one else around I can trust. Except you and me. That's right, except us. We'll get back with you, Mac. The three of us can find him. We'll each drive a sled so we can travel fast. All right, let's get going. Though Sergeant Preston had no evidence against Bat, he was keeping him under surveillance. And he learned early the following morning that both Bat and Scar had left town. A traveler arriving in town from the north had seen them on the trail. The sergeant harnessed his team and started after them. On King! On the Huskies! But it was slow work. It was snowing and there were no sled tracks to follow. The sergeant had to stop at every way cabin to check and make sure he was on the right trail. It was evening before he reached the wilderness trading post on the edge of the Black Forest. There he had supper and prepared to spend the night for the factor, Hal Morgan, had discouraging information. I'm sure they didn't pass here, Sergeant. They were seen at Three Oaks. They must have turned west between here and there. Sure. They're not going after them now. No, the team needs a rest, and the storm's getting worse. But storm or no storm, it's too hot in here for King. All right, boy, I'll let you out. Go on, brother. The sergeant turned King into the run with his teammates, and he burrowed down into the snow beside them. The storm grew wilder during the night, but he slept soundly until shortly after midnight when... He was wakened by a dog howling. It was a big white Siberian at the edge of the forest. He knew the dog. He had seen him in Dawson. King barked a welcome. The dog ran toward him and then back toward the forest, barking an invitation to follow him. This was no invitation to play. It was a warning of danger, a request for help, and King decided the sergeant should be told about it. The fence of the run wasn't high, and King scrambled over it on the first attempt. He ran to the back door of the post and started scratching on it. The white dog seemed to realize he was getting help and stood motionless in the middle of the clearing. At last, the door opened. Now what, King? The sergeant saw the white dog. Al. Uh, what is it? That's the Siberian I was telling you about, the one that belonged to Bat. The one the boy took? The one the boy disappeared at the same time, at any rate. He seems to want you to follow him. I shall. I'll come with you. Five minutes later, the sergeant and Morgan followed King across the clearing. Flash kept a hundred feet ahead of them as they plunged into the forest. You ever seen the dog before around here? No. What's in this direction? Uh, nothing much. The way Rameau used to live about a mile from here, his cabin's empty now. You sure? Has it been empty for the past week? That I can't say. Would Teddy know about the cabin? Yes. His father prospected Wilderness Creek one summer. Teddy was with him. That's enough. I'm sure Flash is leading us to him. But what about Bat and Scar? They may be after Teddy, too. Yes. They may have found him. I'm afraid of what that might mean. <laughs> Preston and Morgan could no longer see Flash, but King kept them on his trail, and finally they saw a faint glow ahead of them. That light from the cabin? It must be. 
As they neared the edge of the clearing in which the cabin stood, they could see Flash standing in front of it, barking furiously. A moment later, the door swung open and Teddy ran out. Teddy! Now, come back here! Almost at once, the figure of a man loomed in the lighted doorway. A gun flashed in his hand. The sergeant reached for his gun, but before he could fire, Flash had thrown himself at the man in the doorway. A shot rang out. The dog dropped to the ground. Before the man could fire again, the sergeant's gun spoke. The man clutched his arm and slammed the door of the cabin. Teddy reached the cover of the trees and ran straight toward the sergeant. Sergeant! Sergeant Preston! You all right, Teddy? Yes, but Flash, he tried to keep Scar from shooting. Who else is in that cabin? Bat Milan and Mac. They were going to kill me. I tried to make them believe I didn't know anything about what happened in the barn. But they knew I was lying. Then all of a sudden, we heard Flash barking outside. And they all went to the window. I took a chance and ran out the door. Oh, poor Flash. Teddy, what did happen in the barn? That shot a man. You saw him? Yes. I was looking down through the trap. I was up in the loft. I went up there when I heard them coming. i have been feeding Flash, and Bat told me that if I ever did it again, he'd, he'd fill me full of buckshot. Well, why'd you run away, Teddy? Why didn't you come to me? Oh, I was scared. Bat shot the other man because he threatened to tell on him. Tell what? That Bat had committed another murder back in San Francisco. Did he mention any names? I'll never forget. Matt Barton. That's all the evidence I need. A motive and an eyewitness. Al, take Teddy back to the post. Are you going after them? The boy said there were three men. I have an idea. They're coming after me. Look, they've put out the lamp. Hurry. Come on, Teddy. All right. As Morgan and Teddy started back through the forest, the door of the cabin opened. Easy, boy. The sergeant could barely make out the figures of the three men through the thickly falling snow, but he decided to try a bluff. You're covered! Stand where you are and drop your guns. You're under arrest. The men's answer was to open fire in the direction of the sergeant's voice as they scattered and ran toward the woods. The sergeant held his fire. Now it was impossible to see his opponents, and they were three against one. But the sergeant had one great advantage. King was with him, and King could trail each of the men to his cover. Go on, boy, find them. Easy does it. Quiet, fella. The great dog moved carefully from tree to tree, the sergeant following close at his heels. Finally, he stopped and looked up in his master's face. The sergeant could see only a few feet ahead through the darkness and the falling snow, but he listened intently. And then he heard cautious footsteps coming slowly toward him. Mac stepped past the tree where the sergeant was waiting. The sergeant brought the barrel of his gun down on the side of the man's head. He dropped to the ground with a sigh. Mac's wrists were handcuffed behind his back. The sergeant then stuffed a bandana in his mouth and unfastened King's collar. I'll have to use this for his ankles, King. <laughs> when Mac was bound hand and foot. One down, two to go, King. Go on, boy. <laughs> Once more, the stalking process began. But this time, they ran into bad luck. The sergeant stumbled over a rock and hit the trunk of a tree with his shoulder. The boughs of the tree were heavy with snow, and the slight jar was enough to send it falling to the ground. One of the bullets nicked the tree behind which the sergeant had taken cover. But as soon as the volley had ended, he fired in return. He had placed the gun flashes accurately. Scar cried out. And a moment later, Bat yelled for mercy. Uh, don't shoot anymore. I've been hit bad. Can I drop my gun? Bat Milan? Yeah, yeah, I surrender. Where's Scar? Right there. You, you got him, he's done for. We'll see. Sergeant, we didn't know it was you. Oh, who do you think it was? Hey. Some friend of the kid trying to trick us. He was a friend of Teddy's, all right. Look, we were only trying to catch him for you. We were going to take him back to Dawson and hand him over to you for trial. And why was Scar shooting at him? Because he was trying to get away. Teddy's told me his story, and I'm arresting you for the murder of Ruth Caldwell. Oh, no. Scar's is dead, huh? And if he is? All right, I'll tell you the truth. It was Scar who killed Ruth. I saw him myself. I tried to stop he'll, him. You're a liar. He isn't dead. No, he'll live to hang. Go on, Bat. Head of me to the cabin. I'll carry Scar and bind your wounds there. Go on. Morgan and Teddy didn't go all the way back to the post. When the shooting stopped, they returned to the clearing to see what had happened. There was a light in the cabin again. When they crossed the clearing cautiously and looked in the window... There's Bat and Mac. Their wrists handcuffed behind their backs. Where's the sergeant? Kneeling down on the floor beside the stove. Come on in. As they opened the door, they saw Scar lying on the floor his chest and arm bandaged with his own shirt. You captured them all, Sergeant. Yes. 
Where's Flash, Sergeant? He wasn't outside. Well, he's over in the corner on the blanket there. He's... He's alive, Teddy. Come have a look at him. Is he going to... Die? Why, well, I don't think so, son. See, he's trying to wag his tail. Flash. Good boy. He deserves a medal for what he did tonight. Sergeant, about me. What about you? Well, are you going to arrest me for taking him? It wasn't the right thing to do. I know. I just hated to leave him there to be beaten and starved. Well, when you tell the judge that, I think you'll understand. I, I'd rather go to prison than to, to have you give Flash back to bat. He doesn't deserve to own a dog like Flash. He certainly doesn't. Then, then can't you do something about it, sir? Teddy, that won't be in any position to take care of a dog for a long, long time. So the court will probably place him in someone else's custody. Might even be yours. Honest? It's possible. At any rate, I can promise you that Bat will never mistreat Flash again. Never is a long time, Sergeant. You're going to find that out, Bat. All three of you will stand trial as soon as we get back to Dawson. There can only be one verdict. The evidence is in, the conviction is sure, and this case is closed. <laughs> In our next adventure, after robbing and killing an old trapper and planning so that the blame would be thrown on the trapper's young partner, the two killers, Mac and Manny, headed south toward Whitehorse. Mash! Mash, you husky! Yeah, it's better for us to take no chances than to get out of Selkirk. I didn't expect that Monty Preston to come to town. Yeah, I know, Mac. He's plenty smart. We're able to find some clue that'll point to us. If he does and he follows, we'll see that he gets what the old man got. We'll be ready and waiting to fill him with lead. Mercy! Mercy! When Sergeant Preston and the great dog King finally do get on the trail of the killers, they find them waiting with ready guns to shoot them down from ambush. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This program came from Detroit. Today's most popular heroes of outdoor adventure are heard every weekday afternoon from 5 to 6 o'clock. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Mark Trail roams the wilderness, Clyde Beatty defies the beasts of the jungle, and Victor Borga entertains with five minutes of musical laughs. Tuesday and Thursday, there are the Indian hero Straight Arrow riding to uphold justice, Sky King zooming to supersonic action, and Bobby Benson, the cowboy kid, in tales of western daring. Listen to Mutual's Hour for Fun with Mark Trail, Clyde Beatty, Victor Borga, Straight Arrow, Sky King, and Bobby Benson over most of these stations every weekday afternoon. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.